Well, good morning, everybody. It's lovely to know that there are a lot of people watching us this morning as we have our final meeting of the term. I nipped into the year group meetings that were taking place uh, before this, and I think in total we had almost 300 members of uh, the school in the five different meetings taking place. It was great to see and great to know that so many of you are so actively engaged, even after having been away. So it's 105 days, Martin tells me, since we were last in here together. Uh, and that seems a very, very long time ago, and the hall feels just as empty as it did, even though I've got Martin here with me and Eamon, uh, whose birthday it was yesterday, so happy birthday, Eamon, for, uh, for yesterday. Um, I've got them in here with me. It is just not right, as I've said several times, for you guys not to be here uh, with us as well. Term started on the 16th of April, when we did our first virtual meet, and we've kept those going uh, since then, and this is the final one. So what we're going to be doing this morning is a combination of things. We're going to be uh, handing out some trophies. We're going to be handing out the Anne Raper Memorial Trophies for, um, uh, to, to people who've made a real contribution in schoolrooms and seniors and in uh, college. I'm going to read out the house results and present the house trophy to myself uh, and accept it on whoever's behalf I'm accepting it. Um, and then we're going to have some goodbyes. Obviously, we've got a, a number of uh, staff who are leaving a number of staff also who are stepping down from responsibilities, and we want to acknowledge that this morning. Um, I've got a few words I want to say at the end, uh, particularly to our leavers, who I hope are with us in really good numbers this morning, um, and to frame that for them. Uh, and then we will sing Shaggy Shaggy Locks together. You heard the music on the way in, as it were, um, and we'll do that with gusto. You won't be able to hear me singing, I hope. Uh, so uh, you, you'll be spared that monstrosity. So to start with, uh, to begin our meeting this morning, um, I'm going to hand over firstly to Kitty and then following her to Mandy and then following her to Helen without any introduction from me um, to say who has won the Anne Raper Memorial Trophies in schoolroom seniors and college uh, this year. So over to Kitty to start with. Morning. And the Anne Raper Trophy is given at the end of schoolrooms, seniors and college to celebrate someone who truly embodies the values of the school. It's given a memorial of Anne Raper, a long-standing member of staff at school who worked in the JCR and truly strives to see the best of God and good in everyone. So the recipient of the Anne Raper tr Trophy truly walks cheerfully over the world. They are people who have been involved in community action, both within the walls of the school and beyond it. 
They are a true friend supporting their peers and they understand and contribute to the Bootham spirit by enriching the lives of others through their kindness, cheerfulness and selflessness. They will give freely of their time and make a real difference to those around them and they truly are the best of good eggs. So it's a real honour and privilege to let you know that the winner of the Anne Raper Trophy this year in Upper School Room is the wonderful Maya Lindridge who has impressed us all with her grace, compassion and unending devotion to making the world a better place for all of us. So congratulations to you, Maya. Good morning. This year's winner is personable, positive and consistently demonstrates humanity, grace, compassion and good humour. He certainly does epitomise the spirit and values of our community and has done so ever since I first taught him in lower school room. His contribution to her spray is probably more widely known, but he had a key role as the pianist and accompanist in last year's production of the importance of being of the importance of being earnest. He also performed with Jill Simpson with great good humour in a ridiculous sketch, though Jill's words not mine, on courtly love, which she wrote for Parents' Day. It is characteristic that he had to run from delivering a science presentation to the English department, don his armour, take up a sword and deliver in a leading role and he did so without breaking a sweat. It gives me great pleasure to present this trophy to Eric Rogers. Congratulations Eric, you thoroughly deserve this. Morning everyone. Um, it's very difficult, as always, to pick out individuals from a year group of amazing people. And um, you have all offered um, endearing characteristics and memorable moments to me. Uh, and I thank you for that. And I will miss you all uh, desperately. Uh, so do come and visit. This year, I've decided uh, to um, share the award, actually, in College Two, um, between uh, two individuals who um, have kind of moved quietly through the school actually and through the year. Um, fundamentally, they possess key characteristics for the Anne Roper, Anne Roper Trophy, and that is that they are kind and thoughtful to everyone and therefore make everybody's lives around them immeasurably better. And for me, that is the most important characteristic to have and what better way to live. So, I would like to award it to Flora Guilford and Leo Body. Congratulations. I think that uh, I think that you should be clapping them, and I'm going to clap. It was wonderful, young people too. Um, and I would wish uh, that they were here to, to receive a trophy, so I could hand it over, having obviously sanitised my hands and the trophy before doing so. So thank you to them and well done to them. And I truly believe that they are great nominations and they really do uh, characterize the spirit of the Anne Raper Trophy, which in turn uh, d demonstrates the sort of values that we hold very dear here at Bootham. So moving on to the presentation of the House Trophy, uh, which the eagle-eyed amongst you may have seen in shots, I'm told, uh, but um, I hope you didn't. Um, here are the final points. So in fourth place, the house that came in fourth place had 2,814 points. The house that came in second place had, I'm gonna have to put my glasses on because I've gone all blurry, 3,090 points. Uh, second place house had 3,101 points. So that's really close. Uh, and first place, the house was a little bit further ahead with 3,230 points. And those houses were, uh, in reverse order then, so on the 2,814 points, we have Furbank, here are the blue ribbons, uh, which sadly are um, not going to be used on the, uh, on the trophy this morning. Um, in second place, um, oops, I got that wrong, didn't I? That was done, done, wrong. <laughs> okay, rewind, everybody. This is, we're going to do this properly now. In fourth place uh, was Furbank, which is the yellow house, of course, so... There we go, there's that one, as you might have guessed, in second place, th third place was Pendle, I'm really getting confused, with, with uh, 3,090 points, so there's uh, Pendle's ribbons, not needed for this year, um, and in second place, uh, Red, 
So those of you um, who are uh, in a greenhouse can start to cheer at this particular point. Second place is Swarthmore. Sorry, Swarthmore. But in first place, excuse me, with the green ribbons tied beautifully already onto the handles of the house cup, uh, we have, and congratulations to them, to Brig Flats with 3,230 points. Uh, I've no idea uh, off the top of my head who should be receiving this, but I have to say I am grateful to receive this trophy on behalf of Brig Flats um, as I present it to myself and hope you will give Brig Flats, even if you're not in it, um, a big round of applause for doing that. Well done to everybody. Lovely. Okay. So it's time uh, to do the saddest bit of today, and it's time for us to say our goodbyes. And we have five members of staff who've served here in various capacities uh, over various lengths of time, um, who we need to bid farewell to. And again, we wish that you were here to do that and they were here to hear it and to respond. Some of these are being done uh, by video, where the member of staff has uh, prepared something in advance. And a couple of colleagues have asked to join us live this morning and to, and to say what they'd like to say uh, live to all of us. Um, um, what I'm going to do is I'll bob up in between each of these um, presentations uh, to introduce the next one, so we won't do them in turn. So first of all, uh, to say goodbye to Paul Irvine, who at very short notice uh, joined us in January uh, from Spain and has only just gone back there, poor chap, uh, because he's had to stay in this country due to the lockdown, of course. Um, we have Paul Irvine and Erin Davis, I think, has a few words to say about Paul. Hi, Paul. On behalf of all your students at Bootham School, I want to say a huge thank you for your time here and wish you all the best of luck for the new exciting part of your life. You joined in the middle of the year, which is never easy, but you certainly rose to the challenge. And you not only introduced us to the subjunctive and C clauses, but also many Spanish pop singers through the music videos you often showed us, something you'll definitely be remembered for. Uh, thank you so much for everything, and we wish you all the best for your time in Valencia, and hope that you eat lots of paella. Muchas gracias, Paul, y buena suerte. Okay, I'd just like to say thank you. Uh, it's been a great uh, few months. It didn't turn out as I expected, uh, but it was really nice to meet lots of great students and to reconnect with uh, staff and meet new members of staff. So all the best for the summer. Adios. And adios to Paul, and I'm really glad he's back home in Spain now and can enjoy the sunshine that has deserted us, at least for the time being. So after, after Paul, we're going to move on to a member of staff who's been here for considerably longer uh, than Paul has in his second stay, of course. Um, and that is Russell Newlands. And there are a group of boys from his college, too, uh, who are going to say a very fond farewell to him. Hi Russell, it's me, Theo, your favourite ever student. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for everything you've done. Um, you've managed to make physics super interesting and, and, and managed to chew up all of our days, I think. Um, there's something about going into a lesson and not quite knowing if you're going to leave it with all of your limbs attached. That, that somehow just manages to, to chew up everyone's day, I think. Um, and, and yeah, you managed to make, having been taught by you uh, for physics and astronomy over the last four years, I think you've, you've managed to make both really, really interesting. And, um, and, and I've loved every second of it. So um, just saying, wish you all the best in Brunei and we'll, we'll come visit you sometime. Um, although we might, we might actually see you in, uh, or see you in York before then, um, before you leave. But, but if not, then we'll, we'll see you in Brunei. And uh, thank you. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Hi, Russell. Um, thank you so much for the past two years of teaching. Um, I'll admit, I haven't felt completely safe in all the lessons, but the danger aspect when it comes to practicals is what makes physics beautiful. And you're a proper mad scientist. Um, I hope the students at your new school love you as much as we do. And don't steal your hole punches.
Paris Hall. Uh, I am here to say thank you. And I'm very thankful for being your student and your border these past one and a half, two years, even though it ended very abruptly. And looking forward to seeing you again if possible. And good luck wherever you may go. Thank you for teaching us throughout the years and making the lessons very memorable. From shaking due to Catherine withdrawals to lessons that seemed far too dangerous to be taught in school, it was all unforgettable, not to mention your hatred towards Deneth. But on a serious note, your eccentric teaching style and love for the subject will be deeply missed within the Boogham community and I hope that your next school values you as much as we do. Hi Russell, we will miss you. Never quite knowing if we're going to make it out of your next lesson alive or not. Always added a little bit of spice to the day. Well, Russell, I heard you're leaving school this year. So I just wanted to say it was really nice to be your student. And I will definitely remember you. And yeah, although we're not in school, it's still sad. As it was sad when you left the boarding. But yeah, I hope, I hope you will get on well and good luck in the future. Russell, thanks for your help through the years and uh, good luck. Hello. Well, I just want to say um, a few words. Um, thank you, Russell, for everything you've done. Like, since I've come to the school, I should be in a fun ride, honestly. Like, the way you helped me just fit in immediately. Like, when you were there in the boarding house, it was just perfect. Like, everything was just great. But I hope everything goes well with whatever you plan later on and wish you all the best. Thanks, Russell. Hi, Russell. I just wanted to say thank you for uh, the last two years of pretty decent fun physics. Uh, good luck in Brunei. And more important than uh, teaching us physics is that you've helped me discover my favourite physicist. And that is, of course, Mr. Brian Cox. Big Brian. Hi, Russell. Now that you're leaving, I would like to say thank you for teaching me for the past five years, um, starting from year nine, where you were my deputy housemaster in Fox and in year in, for GCSE in um, astronomy and through A-level um, physics and A-level. All, all of your lessons were fun, informative, and most importantly, somebody might or can get hurt, which is uh, definitely, definitely fun in an A-level lesson. Yeah, good luck in your next job, Russell. Hello Russell, this is a little message from your favourite student of all time. It's been a great adventure being taught by you in both physics and in astronomy, and it's been rather a liberating one too. We've had our fair share of disagreements and arguments, now I won't go into who came out on top, but I will say it's always been a very good time. The dynamic in your lessons along with your eccentric teaching style and being fearful for my life during some of the experiments has made being taught by you an unforgettable and thoroughly enjoyable experience. I know that the students you meet in the future will love to have you as their teacher. I'll bet you'd be hard pressed to find a group of students more interesting slash difficult to teach than ours. All the best for what your future holds, and from me and everybody in physics, thank you. Hi everyone, um, I'm sure you're all thinking the same thing, but this has got to be the strangest end to a school year that I think I'm ever likely to experience. So um, yeah, I'm leaving Bootham. Um, some of you already know this. Uh, I'm going to teach in an international school in Brunei. And uh, for those of you who don't know where that is, it's on the island of Borneo in Southeast Asia. Um, so I'm really excited. I hope I get a haircut before I leave, as I guess probably a lot of um, <laughs> you guys will want to do so quite soon as well. So I've been thinking about moving for about 18 months now. And it was a decision I had to think really long and hard about. It was only really about middle February, I started looking for a new job and I got appointed around the middle of March. So that was just before lockdown. I think had I waited any longer, I probably would still be here for next year. And the decision 
was difficult and I had to think long and hard about it because I think anyone who's taught in other school knows how special and unique Bootham is. Um, this is the fifth school I've worked at full time. I spent no more than three years in those other places and I spent 13 years in Bootham. So for me, that was a long time. Um, I've got lots of wonderful memories of my time at Bootham and I, you know, I, I, too many to actually mention here, but I just count myself lucky to have worked with um, so many incredibly talented staff. I'm always in awe of you guys. So um, you do a fantastic job. Um, and all the inspirational pupils as well that I'm going to miss that I've taught over the years and I'm teaching now. Um, you guys get me into work every morning. Um, you get me out of bed. You get me into the classroom. You get me thinking of new and exciting ways to teach physics. I couldn't do this job without uh, having people like you around me. So thank you very much. I'm going to miss you all, especially my tutor group. So anyway, I wish you the best of luck next year. And I hope that school returns back to a semblance of normality in September. Um, uh, I'm sorry to go, but like I said to Chris back in March, live adventurously, right? Well, that's what I intend to do. So goodbye, Bootham. Live adventurously indeed. Thank you so much to, to Russell and to the, to the lads there. It was great to have contributions that have been sent in from Hong Kong, from Nigeria and from Poland, uh, which underlines really the sort of state that we're in at the moment, but also the, uh, the nature of the school and what makes it special. Um, I have to particularly commend uh, Zach and Joe on having the best lockdown here uh, in that particular video, but uh, all the very best, much more importantly to Russell as he goes to pastures new and pastures hot. So moving on now, we're going to say goodbye uh, to Joan Atwell, and that is going to be done for us by Matthew Heppel and Lottie Walker. Joan has been at Bootham for 14 years, and it's safe to say the drama department would be completely lost without her. From making beautiful costumes for our school plays to showing her GCSE students how to transform themselves into rats, Joan has been an integral part of the school. Always funny, kind, and only ever constructive, never critical, Joan has made the experience at Bootham significantly better for many of her students, ourselves included. Joan must be the only teacher in the world to have actually delivered on her promise of a pizza night, and is definitely the only teacher to ever refer to her class as her little chickens. Backstage during productions, Joan was always very calm should a crisis occur. For example, the time she had to print off some extra bills after the actor playing Algernon accidentally tore every single one of them up. Or when almost a hundred year sevens need her help with something seemingly easy. You can always rely on Joan to be the voice of reason and encouragement, always being the first person to find you afterwards and tell you what a great job you've done. Throughout all of the many drama lessons Joan has taught whilst at Bootham, she's always found a way to make those less enthusiastic get themselves involved. For example, during the Year 9 performances to the Junior School, when she helped Elia Blackstone deliver a very convincing and very layered performance in the role of a tree. During our class's devising process, Joan always gave us new and interesting ideas and also helped us realise what we could do to improve without ever needing to tell us. Joan always managed to create a laid-back yet focusing environment for her classes, the best kind of atmosphere to work in, and one of the many reasons why so many of us have loved her classes. And so, from everybody involved with Drama at Booth, and we'd like to say a massive thank you to you, Joan, and also that I definitely do accept your invitation to come visit you in South Africa. Joan, in your goodbye card to your GCSE students, you said an elephant never forgets, and we know that we will never forget you. Whoa, okay. Um, thank you guys. That really, really very kind things that you have said. And um, I need to tell you that um, literally the doorbell went about two minutes ago with the most amazingly beautiful bunch of flowers. Um, and I thank you very, very much for that. They are extraordinary. Um, it's been, it's hard. It's very hard to say goodbye because it's been an extraordinary time working at Bootham. I um, it's been a privilege. It's been a privilege to have worked with 
all my drama students and all my English students and broader than that, my classic students, my EPQ students, I've uh, been involved in a number of ways. And um, both them students and staff are just the most incredibly enthusiastic, energetic, um, fun, challenging, thought-provoking and thoughtful people who ultimately though manage to be a little bit naughty and a little bit nice together, which is fantastic. Um, teaching for me has been a sense of a partnership. And for me, I have been very privileged to partner with amazing students and staff over the years that I've been there. You have all taught me so much. And as we allow our Bootham students to go out into the world, I feel that the world is a better place for you being in it. I've really enjoyed being part of productions at Bootham. Uh, as you have pointed out in your thanks to me, it's been a lot of what we do. Um, and I've, I've loved the fact that students have allowed me to speak with my funny accent, to say things like, just now, when I actually mean later, go away. And then to say, no, no, which I mean right now, let's do it. And to say cheers when, I mean goodbye, not thanks, and often for suggesting that an actor could just wear those pants when I mean trousers. They have, the students at Bootham have allowed me to stick them in strange costumes to paint their faces with alarming looks to stick beards on, and then when it's over to put the most revolting goo all over their faces and get it all off, and at the end of all that, you still managed to thank me. And that for me is one of the things that I've really loved about the school. Um, more importantly though, I want to wish you the best when you go out into the world eventually. I want to wish to tell you about my hopes for your futures. I hope that you have every opportunity to travel as widely as you can and to not just visit a hotel somewhere, but to experience a different way of the world and to understand how there are so many ways to arrive at a similar outcome to things and to understand different cultures and different places. I also hope and wish for you that you find love, that you love and are loved in return, and that eventually your passion, like mine, becomes your career challenging and satisfying you in equal measures. So thank you and all the very, very best for the future. Um, you are at an extremely special school and very, very fortunate. And I have been fortunate to walk that pathway with you for just a small while. So goodbye. Well, thank you to Joan and thank you to uh, Matthew and Lottie for their, for their words to her. Very nice to know that it was so beautifully timed that the flowers turned up right in the middle of the speech of actor. What a great thing that was. Um, we're going to move now to uh, the Napa Valley, where Liam Roche uh, has prepared some thoughts, along with Henry Stevens, who is rather closer to home, uh, about uh, Sarah Allen. Sarah, thank you so much for your years at Bootham. Thank you for the journey that has given me an avid interest in RE and a passion, a lifelong passion for the subject. Thank you for your expertise and your gentle encouragement, which has mean, meant so much to me and many others of the school. Thank you for your work for refugees. Thank you for encouraging Bootham to be the best it can. You really are a special teacher and will be remembered as one of the best moving teachers ever. So thank you. Have an amazing retirement and all the best of luck. Good morning. Sarah Allen was the first teacher I met at Budham. And as soon as I made her acquaintance, I was struck with simply how warm and open she was in her speech and in her action. I was thousands of miles away from home, and Sarah was the foremost figure in making me feel at home at Bootham. 
in my six years at this school, she has not only taken a role of a teacher, nor simply as a form tutor, but rather a friend, both with a capital and lowercase f. Her positivity, helpfulness, and outlook have helped me as well as so many others through so much. Sarah's influence can be seen in so many sectors of this school, including donations to migrants, the Quaker pilgrimage, and so many other activity programs. This, I believe, shows in part how outgoing, caring, and simply incredible Sarah is. Though you are leaving Bootham and moving on, I am certain I speak for so many in this school and in the wider world when I say that your actions here, both inside and out of the classroom, will not only be remembered with an enormous appreciation by students, staff, and others past and present, but as well appreciated similarly by those same individuals and more uh, inside and out of this school going forward. Thank you does not encapsulate the gratitude felt by myself and so many others who know you. Happy retirement and the best of luck. Thank you very much, Henry and Liam, for your kind words. I'm touched you both took the trouble to record your reflections. When you decide to become a teacher and go for an interview for a teaching job, you're always asked the question, well, why do you want to go into teaching? And my reply was, because I like working with young people. And the good news is that after a lifetime of teaching, my answer would still be the same. And that's down to the wonderful students at Bootham. Thank you for being fun and inspiring me in, my, in your many unique and different ways. It's time now for me to hang up my whiteboard pens and skip off into the world of retirement. I will always look back on my time at Bootham fondly. Bye-bye. Bye bye, Sarah. We'll miss you very much indeed. Um, final farewell that we've got to say this morning is to the member of staff out of the five who are leaving, who's been here with us the longest. Um, and we're going to have two contributions. First, first Alice Anger is going to speak, uh, I think, about Carol's, Carol Campbell's teaching. And then secondly, three of the College Two Boarders who were with her for um, a number of years, some of them, I think, f five years before she stepped out from that, are going to reflect on her role within the school for so many years as a really well-loved and hugely effective uh, boarding house mistress. So, first of all, Alice, and then Shasha, Natalie and Amelia will speak, and then Carol will reply. When I first joined Bootham School at the start of upper school room, I had never learnt Spanish before. I was in Carol Campbell's class and after only a few lessons of being taught Spanish, I started to pick up the language much quicker than I thought I would and it's all thanks to the help she gave me. As I moved into Lower Senior at the beginning of this year, I decided to study both French and Spanish for my GCSEs and I was very pleased to be put in Carol's class for both. She has been a great teacher and I feel very lucky to have had her support through the lead up to our exams. Each lesson I look forward to going into her class knowing that it will be very enjoyable. Most lessons we will play what Carol called, Carol called the number game in which we had to count up as far as we can in either French or Spanish but if another student said the number at the same time it was back to the start which happened very regularly I tell you. As we've all been in lockdown, we've been having weekly Google Meets with Carol, which I have thoroughly enjoyed, as we would have a class catch-up and discuss what has been happening each week with every one of us. Having me in both her French and Spanish classes, Carol must have found it hard to manage the overload of emails I have sent, checking I have been doing the work correctly. I'm sure you will enjoy a break from this, and thank you for putting up with me for two years. I am forever grateful to have had Carol as my teacher in the first, first year of my GCSEs and I wish you all the best in the future. We will never forget you.
Carol Campbell is leaving this year and we want to say a massive thank you. We are sorry to hear that you are going and we just wanted to say thank you for everything you've done for us. You have been with us since year seven and have been supporting us throughout our time at Bootham and have played a massive part in our lives. We wouldn't be where we are without you. We want to thank you for putting up with us even when we wouldn't go to sleep or purposefully miss breakfast because we wanted to sleep in. Or even that time you took all our phones and threatened to sell them on eBay and someone in our room took it a little bit too serious. The yearly trip to Scarborough was amazing and the visits to Lake Ice Cream are still a regular occurrence for us, so a big thank you to you. Cinema and pizza nights will forever be our favourite time spending it with you, Emily and Roundtree. We may not remember everything you said, but we will remember how special you made us feel. You've been truly amazing and you will forever be in our hearts. We are so sorry we have to say goodbye for now. We hope your time after Bootham is full of happiness and love. We will miss you very much and hope you don't miss us too much. Thank you and take care, Carol. In recent years, when I've watched staff and students say goodbye to Bootham at the end of the year, I'd often thought about what it might be like when I left the school. This wasn't a scenario that I ever imagined, but recording my goodbye message is so much easier than standing up and delivering it in morning meeting. So for that, I'm very grateful. The novelist Mary Ann Evans, who was known as George Eliot, wrote, what do we live for if it's not to make life a little less difficult for others? I hope that during my time at Bootham, I've perhaps managed to make life a little less difficult on occasions for some of you here today, for those that came before you, and for generations of much loved brown tree girls. I really enjoyed the 26 years that I've spent at Bootham, but I have to say that last year was a difficult year. Richard Burton and I were very close, and his illness and sudden death was very difficult for me, for my family, and for his many, many friends here at Bootham and beyond. I was really lucky to spend a lot of time with him before he died. We had such a lot of laughs and he, along with my friend Hickey in Spain and my lovely family, helped me make the adventurous and liberating decision to resign from my job. Now back to George Eliot. She also wrote, it's never too late to be what you might have been. I think that that is a great message for me at 53 as I embark on a new career in hospitality, but also for you, staff and students, when you return to Bootham in September. I would like to say a really big thank you to Bootham staff, students and parents, past and present, for everything that you've meant to me and to the Campbell family. We'll really miss you. Thank you so much. And we'll miss all of you as well. Thank you so much to the students who uh, recorded those tributes. Thank you so much to the staff for their response. And uh, they will be very, very sadly and sorely missed at school as we return next year. There are four members of staff who are not leaving us, but are stepping down from roles that have had great significance uh, within the school and will have affected uh, your experience of it to a very significant extent as well. So I would like to pay tribute to the following four colleagues who have been, all of them, very effective uh, and skilled and positive heads of department, leading their colleagues uh, in uh, their own individual teams to ensure that what you get in the classroom on a daily basis is the very, very best that you can have. So to the following, to Christina Oliver, who's been our head of Modern Foreign Languages, to Jill Simpson, who's been our head of English, to Tracy Coatstake, who's been our Head of Religious Studies, and to Mark Robinson, who's been our Head of Chemistry, all of whom we are delighted will be staying with us, some in a full-time and some in a part-time capacity. My enormous thanks and my gratitude on behalf of the whole community for the blood, sweat, tears and toil that you have poured into those roles and the departments that you have built and will be handed over next year to very grateful recipients. Uh, we admire the work that you've done and we're enormously grateful for it and hope that somehow not doing those roles will give you a little more rest than perhaps you've been able to have, not just in the last term, but over the years that you've been doing it. Thank you.
I'm going to turn now to a few thoughts and reflections as we finish the term today. Well, today's the day I've been looking forward to for weeks. I certainly woke with great anticipation this morning, with that excited feeling in my stomach that I only get on days like this. Martin's here in the hall with me too, and I know that he is just as excited. And I know also that Ruth will be as well, as will several of my colleagues. I was speaking to Sue Tomlinson only yesterday, who confirmed that too. Today is the day that my favourite musical, Hamilton, gets released on Disney+. Plus. Ah, uh, uh, yes, uh, and it's also the end of the most weird, most challenging, most worrying, most exhausting school year that most, if not all of us, will ever have experienced. And we got there. As a school, as a staff, as a lovely body of students, as a community, there's, there's the sum of all these people and more. We got there. And we're still turning up. And we're still alive and most definitely kicking. And we're still looking forwards and moving forwards. We've all grown as we've survived. We've all struggled at times. And we've just kept going when it's been tough. Um, as well as through the moments of unexpected joy and love that have delighted us, knowing that this too shall pass, and in all likelihood, all will be well. And that's worth celebrating and being proud of, and it's worth taking a few minutes to take stock of as well. This is also a day for some staff, as we've just acknowledged, and a much bigger number of students, especially those in college too, that marks not just the end of the school year, but the end of a school career, or at least the end of their time at Bootham for a small number. And thus it seems doubly a good time, as I said, to take stock. I've talked to you in meetings during this year on several occasions about the psychologist Martin Seligman, the founder of positive psychology and the originator of the PERMA model of well-being that we have been exploring in various forms. Last night, I managed quite accidentally to catch the end of a live interview with Dr. Seligman on Facebook. He was asked by the host to sum up what he thought was the most important thing that the COVID-19 pandemic had done for people. And he didn't hesitate in his answer. It's all, it's shown all of us, he said, what we really care about most. It's shown all of us what we really care about most. He explained that in some small way at the very least, and in very large and very difficult ways for some, we have all come face to face with our own mortality. And we've been forced to contemplate the actual fragility of life itself, which our lives in the modern world rarely give us the time to acknowledge. The pandemic has forced us all to examine what we take for granted, and realize that those things are fragile and hugely precious. Our friendships, our work, our freedoms, our ambitions, the health of our bodies, our lifestyles, our education, our ability to survive. This period of what we're living through has brought us closer to what we most humanly value, concluded Zeligman. What he didn't say next, but what he was implying, what he left very deliberately hanging in the air, was the question, and now we've identified or reminded ourselves of those things, what are we going to do about them? I guess this period has also reminded us of our own privilege, of our own unearned good fortune. At least I hope it has. We haven't been looking or thinking hard enough if we haven't grasped that with even greater conviction or understood it with even greater depth than we might have done before. We are so lucky, so fortunate, so secure, so advantaged, without exception, even the most disadvantaged in our particular community. I hope, for example, that the explosion of the Black Lives Matter movement has moved you to thought, to conviction, and even to action and in doing so, underlined the advantage that you have. So let's not lose this opportunity to take stock of our lives, 
to examine what we really value, to let that shape us and our priorities, our actions, our convictions and our futures. My message to all of you and those particularly who leave us today is really simple. It applies to them and to all of us who will be back here in September. As you go out from here this morning, virtually of course, don't just live life for yourself, live it for others. As several of our leaving teachers have said in their own way. That way lies the surest route to the true happiness and fulfilment that I have very deliberately and without apology for unoriginality referred to in some form or other on all the leavers' comments I've written for the cards over the last week or so. That way you will truly make your mark for good upon the world. My challenge to you all today and to myself, all of you, either leavers or stayers, is not to settle for second best in your life. Don't settle for a comfortable life when you could live an exciting one, however difficult and challenging that might be. Don't settle for liking what you do. Rather, like Sarah said, being passionate about it. Don't live life passively. Live it on purpose. Live it deliberately. Don't live life unseen and on the quiet. Live it out loud and with as much adventure as you can cram into it. Don't settle for just improving your own life when there's actually more joy to be found in improving others' lives. Don't live a life that whispers or mutters, but one that speaks, even shouts loudly and clearly of the values that you've learned here, of the values that really matter. And then don't just gently influence the world for the better. Really try to change it. For that way lies true fulfilment and real happiness, genuine flourishing. That's the way to ensure that what you are ultimately remembered for and what therefore really matters about your entire existence provides ample evidence to indicate that you were a really good person, that you had lived and not just existed. To the class of 2020, let me say thank you. Yours has been quite a journey but you've ended up as being as valued and well-loved a year group as any other we've ever had here. More so, arguably, for the journey that you have been with on, you, you've been on together with us. You have, in the final analysis, and without doubt, been rewarding to teach, generous with your contribution to school life, and enriching to work with both in and out of the classroom. You have made us laugh, sometimes despite ourselves. At times you've inspired us, you've moved us, and you've infuriated us too, some of you a lot. You've learned to care for each other well though, and you've grown more unified over the years. In short, it has been a pleasure and a privilege for us to work with you, and however proud we are of your achievements as you do so, it is sad to see you leave us. But leave you must. And I'll take my leave of you, as I have done in previous years, with a few questions. They are the questions that many of us, whatever age and stage um, we are at, may have pondered over the past few months, as the pandemic has forced us to ask ourselves, what do we really care about, and what is of most value to us? They are the key questions that will shape your future, that will shape how much you will flourish will shape how happy and important your life will be. Pondering them from time to time may prove profitable. So, as you go through your life, will you be more of a giver than a taker? Will you lead or will you just follow? Will you create more than you consume? Will you love much more than you hate? Will you step on others on the way up? Or will you give a helping hand to those below you? Will you keep for yourself? Or will you give away? Will you value truth over ease? Will you value integrity over expediency? 
Will you value fairness over self-interest? Justice over the status quo? Will you be remembered for what you did or for what you didn't do? Will you shape the world with your values or will you let it shape you with its values? Will the world be a tangibly better place because you have been in it? Three years ago, I was sent a quotation by a former student from my time teaching in Cambridge that has since been taped to the bookshelf in my office. I shared it in Lieber's meeting that year and make no apologies for doing so again. It's from a controversial figure, former American President Woodrow Wilson, the man many of you will know who brought into being the League of Nations after the Great War. And his words in this quote speak very strongly to us and are even more of a challenge in the light of some of the difficult contradictions that have emerged in the life of this man over the past few weeks. It's found in a speech given to those leaving Swarthmore Quaker College in Pennsylvania in 1913, just a year before the outbreak of the First World War. And it sums up what I've been wanting to say much better than I can. It goes like this. You are here, I think he means in the world, in order to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world and you impoverish yourself if you forget that errand. You are here to enrich the world and you will impoverish yourself if you forget that errand. So there we are, another year, a uniquely challenging year done. For some of you, a school career done. Whichever of those you find yourself at the end of, I hope that you will look back and you will see and know growth. I hope that you will look back and realize that you discovered what truly matters most in life to you. I hope that you will even look back with gratitude for all the ways that this year has shaped you for good. And I hope that you will look forward with hope and with deep determination to make your overriding priority to do good in the world. Here's my order of what comes next. So this is where we get to sing. And this is where we get to sing along with the video that has been made over the last few hours uh, by a small number of staff and students who took up uh, Paul Fee and Shaggy Shaggy Locks um, video challenge. So what's going to happen in a second is that we are going to show you the video. And the idea is that with the lyrics on the bottom of the screen, uh, you all sing along with it in your own bedrooms or living rooms or out in your gardens or wherever you are at the top of your voice. And I can assure you that Martin and Eamon and I in the hall by ourselves this morning will be doing exactly that. So I'll hand over to Luke to put up the video uh, and let's sing along with uh, what is the nearest I think we have, bizarre though it might be, uh, to a school song. Thank you. 
Well, I really hope you sang that as well as Martin and Eamon and I did in the hall. Um, I, can, I can feel the chairs vibrating with the volume that we managed. Thank you very much to Paul and to uh, James and Luke who put the video together and particularly uh, to those members of staff and the students who actually were prepared to record their voices uh, to add to that. That was lovely. To finish with, we're just going to have a couple of moments of sinus, silence and stillness wherever we happen to be. Um, we will then conclude and Martin's got one or two mess uh, messages for us to finish off with. So let's just, um, for a few seconds, just keep stillness together wherever we happen to be scattered throughout the world. Well, it's handshaky time. So there's my hand to virtually shake yours. And we do so with each other um, wherever we happen to be at this very interesting and difficult time. Uh, I want to say thank you just to finish off with, uh, to add to the thanks that I made in the Parents' Day talk that I did on Saturday. I'm not going to go into any depth and detail because I think that the words then um, were probably the best I could have expressed it. But I want to say thank you to all the staff, those who've been working so hard uh, facing you on your screens day to day. Those who have been working incredibly hard behind the scenes um, to make sure that all the learning and all the care and the support that we've tried to give you this term have happened. I want to say thank you to the staff who've not been able to be at work, who've been at home throughout this period, who haven't been able to contribute but have really wanted to, but have had to be on furlough uh, so that we can uh, balance the books within the school um, that's been terrific contribution as well. And I want to say thank you to you. I want to say thank you to the you as the students for having given so much back to us, for having given so much to my colleagues, for having reminded them on a daily basis why it is they love to do this job and why it is they love to work in this school with people like you. Your contribution, even though I've not seen it on all but a very small number of occasions, has been immense to the way that the school has survived and even thrived during these last few weeks. So I hope that you all, staff, uh, colleagues, parents who might be watching this, anybody else from beyond the school who will see it now or when it's uh, made available, I hope you have a terrific summer, whatever the circumstances you find yourselves in, that you find joy, that you find rest, you find recreation, the putting of yourself back together again. And I hope, I really hope, that in September we will be able to gather here in some form or other and during the year gather as we love to do all together uh, in this place and recreate Bootham School in person and face to face rather than the way we've been doing it for the last three months. All the very best. Have a great summer. Good morning, everyone. Um, my honour to close our proceedings at the end of this academic year. As I do, um, the virtual handshake, I think, could become a virtual heartbeat to send out to all of you. And I've been reminded as we've been meeting virtually, and for those of us in the hall, of Muhammad Ali, um, as we've been speaking. He fits with the global day we had on Wednesday and the protest movement, as well as being self-proclaimed greatest boxer and possibly athlete of all time. He was giving the Harvard commencement speech at the start of the 70s, so a high school dropout speaks to the elite of America, and someone shouted from the crowd, give us a poem, and he replied, with what has gone down as possibly the shortest poem in history, he replied, I, we. The room, the hall has felt empty at the start of this um, meeting together. It has felt filled with all of you, with all your contributions as students and as staff, and your singing as well as we've gone on. Somehow, for me at least, the hall has filled through this time, and that's been very special to come together as a community from right across the globe. And thank you for joining us. 
um, live or watching a recording. If Liam is still up in California, you really need to go to bed soon. It's half past three, but we're delighted that you've joined with us this morning and thank you for your contribution. Thank you also to Luke Gilliver, who has performed wonders in bringing all of this together very, very skillfully. And thank you to Jane Olkovich as well, who's managed to coordinate all of us um, for what we've needed to do. So thank you very much to you too. We will, we hope, meet again with at least some of you in nine weeks and three days, 66 days in comparison with 105 thus far spent in lockdown. It will go soon and we wish you a lovely summer in the meantime. On Monday the 7th of September, I hope you've received these details already. There'll be a reintroduction and an induction for College One and upper senior students. On Tuesday the 8th of September, for College Two, middle and upper schoolroom students, and Wednesday the 9th of September for new lower schoolroom and lower senior students. We will send timings and details out as soon as we can. You will understand the government guidance came out yesterday. The ink is still slightly wet on that. There are likely to be many revisions over the summer, but we will send out a programme for you very soon that we will then be able to work to. It's a special moment at the end of the academic year to dismiss our leavers first in our farewell meeting. So leavers, again, our heartfelt love and care to you. Farewell, go well. Uh, remember that you are never alone. Uh, you are members of the Bootham community and we look forward to staying in contact with you as you do leave and you take a different role within our school family. For the rest of us, farewell and heartfelt good wishes for the summer and we look forward to seeing you again in September. Take care.